Nuclear. The word invokes imagery of entire cities leveled by one bomb, of a post-apocalyptic world darkened by a nuclear winter. It reminds many people of the disasters at Chernobyl, Fukushima, and many others. This video will present a different perspective, one not often portrayed in the media, but one that is equally important as remembering the risks. The benefits of nuclear energy vastly outweigh the downsides, but this is not the way the majority of the population is taught to think. You're watching Interspatial. Drop a like and subscribe for more if you're enjoying the video so far, it really helps me out. The opposition to nuclear power is as much rooted in psychology as it is in physics. Optics are often far more important than fundamentals when it comes to adoption of new technologies or ideas. You can argue whether or not this should be the case, but it is. The optics of nuclear energy have been tainted by a small number of disasters blown up by the media. This is in no way trying to discount the suffering of those caught in these disasters, the grief of their loved ones, or the gravity of these accidents. However, the data does not lie. Nuclear energy is far and away safer than any fossil fuel and falls only slightly behind when pitted against most renewables. This is from data normalised based on the percentage of global energy that each source creates and the total deaths per terawatt hour of energy production. Nuclear energy is 351 times safer than coal, 262 times safer than oil and 40 times safer than natural gas. When compared to renewable energy sources, it is 65 times safer than biomass fuel, an outlier among the renewables in terms of safety, admittedly, with wind being 1.75 times safer and solar and hydro being 3.5 times safer, the safest major energy sources that exist. However, when you're down in the realms of 0.07 deaths per terawatt hour, the differences matter a lot less than, for example, switching from coal to nuclear, which takes you from 24.6 deaths to 0.07. This number also includes the deaths from Chernobyl and Fukushima, as well as deaths related to mining the fuel, which are actually not included in other statistics. So any deaths from coal mining or gathering and refining materials to make solar panels are not added to this data, but the nuclear death toll is all-encompassing. So we've established that nuclear power is one of the safest per unit of energy generated. What about those all-important carbon emissions? Well, nuclear energy is actually the cleanest major energy source we have in terms of CO2 emissions. It is of course way cleaner than dirty energy like coal, oil and natural gas, but it is in fact more than 50 times cleaner than biomass fuel, more than 10 times cleaner than hydropower, and is even cleaner than wind and solar, emitting 3 tonnes of CO2 per gigawatt hour compared to wind's 4 tonnes and solar's 5 tonnes. This is due to the carbon intensive process of creating turbines and solar panels as well as setting up large arrays of these to produce substantial amounts of energy. Despite the data being very clear on this, you see many prominent figures in the media that are proponents of climate sustainability or are in favour of legislation to enforce carbon neutrality, yet these same people rail against nuclear energy which is arguably the only one of the main four low carbon energy sources that could feasibly power the entire planet, reducing carbon emissions by hundreds of multiples in the process. This isn't to say renewables don't help the cause, they certainly do and are way better than fossil fuels, however I would argue that renewables should be supplementary to a main system powered on nuclear energy. As it is not only one of the safest and the cleanest energy source, it is also one of only a few that can provide the massive amounts of energy consistently that we demand in the modern world. However, this is just carbon emissions, and while they're certainly the most important part in terms of clean energy to slow down or even reverse the effects of climate change, one can't be a proponent of nuclear energy and simply ignore the elephant in the room, nuclear waste. Nuclear Nuclear waste is broadly categorised as high level waste and low level waste. Low level waste is typically generic items such as clothing, mops, equipment, tools etc that were used in or around nuclear reactors and has been contaminated with radiation. Usually most low level waste has very low levels of radiation and not much above standard background radiation levels you would find everywhere on earth. However in some cases the radiation levels can be higher. This waste is typically held on site in specialised storage facilities until the radiation has decayed to a low enough level that it is deemed safe to be disposed of through normal means. Any outliers that have substantially higher levels of contamination are sent off and stored in specified containers at low level waste disposal sites. High level waste is typically what most people think of when they hear nuclear waste. Spent uranium fuel from reactors that has decayed into other radioactive isotopes and will remain radioactive for years to come. The vast majority of high level waste, 96% in fact, can be reused again in reactors and is separated out, but the remaining 4% is sent to specialised storage facilities where they are cooled off in water for 5-10 to 10 years, which is wrapped in several feet of steel and reinforced concrete to prevent radiation leaks. Once cooled, these spent fuel rods are transferred to long term storage in underground facilities, with the intent of eventually being removed and disposed of properly. The half life, or the time taken for radiation levels to half, of this waste varies depending on the isotope, it is usually not 
more than 30 years, but in certain cases, like plutonium, it can be as long as 24,000 years. However, usually this type of waste with such a long half-life is part of the 96% that can be reused again in reactors and is not disposed of as waste. Long-term goals for waste management include remediation, which is the use of bacteria to selectively remove radioactivity from waste, geologic disposal, which involves deep storage in repositories without the intent to retrieve, transmutation and reuse, which aim to use spent fuel again to either create more energy or transmute it into more useful fuels, and space disposal. Since nuclear fuels are so massively energy dense, one pellet of uranium fuel approximately half an inch in diameter produces the same amount of power as one ton of coal. The physical amount of waste produced per unit of energy is actually very small, thus it is feasible with space travel becoming cheaper and cheaper every year for us to launch bundles of nuclear waste into deep space. This is a contested idea however and is not currently implemented. This entire video so far has only talked about nuclear fission reactors, and that's on purpose. The reasons for that are 1. Nuclear fusion technology is not commercially viable yet, and that any fusion reactors that currently exist take more energy to start the reaction and keep the pressures high enough for fusion to occur than you actually extract from the fusion process itself. And 2. They are very different technologies despite having the same root idea. Nuclear fusion technology requires its own video, so let me know if you want to see that, but I will cover it briefly here. Where nuclear fission, everything we talked about in this video so far, produces highly radioactive waste and involves splitting atoms apart. Nuclear fusion produces effectively no waste and fuses atoms together to form heavier elements. This is usually fusing hydrogen atoms together to form helium atoms. Yes, the waste from fusion reactors is the stuff that makes your balloons float. Not only does fusion produce little to no waste, it also produces four times as much energy per unit mass of fuel than fission does, and almost four million times more energy per unit mass of fuel than coal. In other words, one gram of hydrogen-based fusion fuel produces the same amount of energy as 4,000 kilograms of coal. So what's holding us back from a fusion powered world? Well, research and development. We simply have not developed commercial fusion reactors that actually produce a net positive energy load. It's a common joke among nuclear engineers that cracking fusion reactors is always 20 years away, but in my opinion, we should be moving towards fission reactors as a temporary solution that is many times cleaner and safer than fossil fuels and even renewables in some cases. We should then throw everything we have at cracking commercial fusion reactors in the meantime. However, the smear campaign that is run against nuclear energy because of only a few disasters that are easy to spin into a narrative that nuclear energy is going to kill us all is holding back the development of nuclear fusion. Which by the way is way safer than even nuclear fission as a fusion reactor physically cannot melt down because it's not a chain reaction that can get out of control if left unchecked. The worst that can happen if you leave a nuclear fusion reactor alone is that it runs out of fuel and slowly dies out like your fireplace. However, as we've discussed already, even nuclear fission is many, many times safer than fossil fuels and is the cleanest energy source that exists in terms of carbon footprint, yet the narrative around nuclear energy is tainted by a concentrated mass of easily identifiable deaths. Again, this is not to discount the suffering of those connected to these disasters, my heart goes out to anyone affected, but the numbers don't lie when they say that far, far more people die each year per unit of energy from fossil fuel sources than from nuclear, and that doesn't even include indirect deaths from things like pollution inhalation. I envision a future of abundant clean energy, however not by wind turbines and solar panels, by nuclear energy. So I ask, why are major nations neglecting nuclear power? Thanks very much for watching, always do your research before assuming things you read are true, and enjoy the rest of your day.